Uh, let's talk to uh, David Shipley now. He's a consultant prison inspector who actually served time uh, in HMP Wandsworth as well. So he knows what he's talking about. David, a very good morning to you. Hi, Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well indeed. Um, tell us a little bit about the inside of uh, Wandsworth Prison. What is it, what's it actually like and what's the atmosphere like? As your, your report just said, it's a, um, a big old Victorian building. It is filthy uh because it's it's poorly managed and understaffed the basic cleaning activities don't really happen so it's full of rats it's full of rotting rubbish often the exercise yards are just full of rubbish mm. that spent with rotted away for days because prisoners are thrown out their windows uh it's so understaffed that the what they call the basic regime often doesn't take place and this was true when i was there and according to the latest hm inspector of prisons report it's still true now right. and the basic regime is the idea that every day a prisoner should be allowed to at the time to have a shower, to have their cell door open so they can clean their cell, right. and to get outside for a little bit of exercise. Those are the basics to keep, you know, hygiene and health. Mm. And you've said in the past as well that it's so badly organised and, and, and badly managed, really, uh, that they lose track of prisoners inside the prison for, for sort of long periods of time. Where, where can they go where they're not sort of observed, if you like? Yeah, I mean, it seems laughable, doesn't it? Because you think that the first job of a prison is to keep track of the, the, the people who are imprisoned. Right. But in my time at Wandsworth, it would often be the case that there was a lockdown for a period of time because a prisoner had gone missing. They would, when I was there, no one actually escaped, but often they would be on a different wing in another prisoner's cell for extended periods of time. Uh, and I think a lot of that is because Wandsworth is, is so big, uh, has such a transient population of prisoners, and is very understaffed. And what that means is you have officers who aren't always on the same wings. They're not really familiar with the faces and names of all the men they're supposed to be responsible for. And those faces and names change all the time anyway. So it's very difficult in that situation to actually have a handle on, is that guy supposed to be in that cell? I can remember one time when I was in uh, Wandsworth on a wing, my cellmate had been sent off to court that day for, for sentencing. And when they came to the checks the late afternoon, the, the officer looked and said, oh, aren't there supposed to be two of you in here? And I said, oh, my cellmate's gone off for sentencing. I think he might be back later. And that was the end of the matter as far as I could see. Mm. There was no effort to, to ascertain whether that was true or not, and certainly on the, the paperwork this guy had, he thought there should have been two of us in a cell. So I think there's a general sloppiness as well at Wandsworth, which does mean this sort of thing happens a lot. Yes. I mean, it is incredible, isn't it? And as far as Daniel Khalif's ability to find his way into the kitchen uh, to work either as a chef or just as some kind of, a, um, a, a, a sort of a, an, an assistant of some kind. How easy is it to, to get that kind of duty? Because many people have said to me, if you're a terror suspect, should you really be allowed access to a place where you could get knives, where you could get any number of other sort of implements? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. The um, Prisoners do lots of jobs in prisons. And the, some jobs are more desirable than others. The kitchen job is one of the most desirable because you get loads of time out of your cell, you get your pick of food, and you can often get extra food which you could trade with other prisoners for whatever. Right. Uh, it's also one of the jobs where you have the closest access to outside the prison because food deliveries come in every day. Mm. And those lorries drive into the prison and then are unloaded by by the kitchen workers and then they drive out again. Mm. Uh, what that means is the security department in the prison should be very conscious of who is allowed to take that job. And if someone is a flight risk, they should not be like anywhere near the kitchen job. Right. So I think that's a very specific question. And he here, was but... supposed to be a flight risk, was he not? I'm not. I mean, I, well, that's it, what it I'm. That's surprising what I'm, if he wasn't. Yeah, I'm reading this morning that he was deemed to be a flight risk, and that was why he was denied bail, and that's why he was on remand in Wandsworth Prison in the first place. If that's the case, it is crazy that he was in the, uh, in the working in the kitchens mm. uh, because it's the kitchens and the stores are probably the two parts of the, of the prison that have the most most contact with outside, mm. and from which an escape would be easiest. Yes. And I mean, is it? I mean, I, 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 I guess unless you've actually tried doing it yourself, um, I, I would imagine hanging un, underneath a. Um, I mean, we know that some uh, migrants used to sort of get across um, in the Euro Tunnel by clinging onto the underside of a Eurostar, which sounds incredibly difficult to me. I mean, I'm assuming uh, from his pur for his purposes, clinging onto the underside of a lorry must be pretty hard to do as well. I, I mean, I've never tried it either, but I, I can't imagine it's, it's a lot of fun. But this is a young, healthy, fit man, yeah. a soldier. And also, you've got to remember, Wandsworth Prison isn't in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, uh, it's it's in the middle of Wandsworth. Yes. So, 
all he would have to do is go a couple of minutes down the road and then drop off and roll away. Yes, and and disappear into the into the crowds of Southwest London. Yeah, uh, it, it's not like it's a prison out in the countryside where he has to get miles and miles away before it's obvious right. where he is. And was it a frightening place to be, would you say, Wandsworth Prison? I mean, is it... Because, I mean, we hear many stories, and without being in there, it's hard to judge, you know, that there are gangs mm. in many prisons, that there are many people who, you know, are, are dangerous and who uh, will, will kind of uh, victimise you if they feel that they can. There, there, are, there are gangs of... of, of sort of Islamic terror types and then there are other gangs of, of, of maybe drug dealers, there are drugs available. What was, it, what was it actually like to be in there? I think those are very much the things I was afraid of before I went to prison. And in a strange way, those aspects weren't as bad as I feared. I think if you aren't involved in gang activity and aren't involved in drugs, mm. it, it doesn't have to be part of your life in prison. Okay. I think the greatest danger I experienced to my health and, and life and, and that of my fellow prisoners was actually from the, the way the prison operated. Uh, healthcare is withheld absolutely until the moment of crisis. Uh, there were times when I, you know, I saw a, a man collapse on A-wing and a, a group of prison officers stood around not giving him CPR and just waited for an ambulance to turn up, I think about 40 minutes later. Yeah. So there's a there's an institutional disregard for life and health, which I think is, is probably far more dangerous. And that combined with the kind of crushing monotony of locking men in, in a cell for 23 hours a day with nothing to do but stare at the walls or stare yeah. at the TV, rather than giving them purposeful mm. work or education, which are actually make, you know, making good use of their time yeah. in prison. I think that is, is a huge uh, threat to life and, yes. and safety in prison. Well, maybe this will put a, a focus on that as well. David, thanks uh, for talking to us. Uh, David's got a piece in The Spectator today. Uh, we'll put that out there for you so you can read it.